Nick, what's up, dude? How you doing, Pat? Thanks. Thanks for jumping on, brother. So, uh, yeah, so guys, I have Nick here. Um, he is a hostile athlete. He does some like physique stuff, which we really don't care about, but we're going to talk about it. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, but Nick, Nick is, you know, he coaches for a living and, uh, he's very real on his social media. So I wanted to bring him on and kind of talk to him. So Nick, man, tell us who you are, man. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Um, first off, thanks for having me on. I'm excited, you know, um, and I'm excited to really get on because, you know, right now people really know me kind of for my persona and I'm still, I'm still a nobody, you know, I'm an NPC competitor uh, for those of you guys that don't know, you know, I'm not even a pro yet. Um, but, you know, I've, I've really, I've been kind of known for my persona, who I am, you know, it's not like one of those fitness influencer personas. It's just like, I'm real, you know, I call out the bullshit. Um, and if I, I tell people what they need to hear, yeah, and even if it's not what they want to hear, um, so it's kind of like who I am as a nutshell. And it's kind of who I've always been, but it was, uh, there was a t- point in college because I'm 22 years old and be 23 in March. Um, there was a point in college where I wasn't always like that. You know, I was the person that was always trying to, you know, have everybody like me. I was trying to have that external validation. I was trying to limit what I could and couldn't say, because I was afraid about what people would judge me online, um, you know, in person, um, that kind of just led to a bad you know, spot mentally about who I thought I myself was as a person. Um, but man, I mean, I got, I mean, I can kind of bring this back about, you know, five, six years ago about kind of how I got into bodybuilding and how it all started for me because it truly started for me back in high school. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, I was always the kid on the football team that was always, you know, we'd have our, our lifts at night after practice or before practice, but I was always the kid that would go in, you know, 5 a.m. before school, you know, back then, training on a like just fasted no food in my system no idea had no idea about nutrition um so just going in for the bicep pump and i'm not even kidding you like i'm not trying to sound like a douchebag but uh that's what it was like i literally got hooked with the style of bodybuilding training because of like the bicep pump um so long story short you know i always loved bodybuilding the sport the competing you know i had no idea what expos were until i watched some 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 og calum von molder yeah. videos and You know, I thought, but I thought football was going to be my life. And, you know, it was my goal to play college ball. Um, So I was recruited to play by a couple of schools um, when I was a junior. And I had a terrible injury happen when I was a junior um, that almost, you know, paralyzed me. Wow. And, you know, it was, I mean, I was, as a kid, I was always breaking bones. You know, I've broken 12 bones to this date, um, which is insane that I'm, I don't have any issues with bones right now. Um, but the biggest and biggest scare was my back and I broke my back playing football. And so I broke it junior year and long story short, you know, I was starting both ways. I was getting looked at by different colleges for both positions. So in my mind, you know, I had that mental block where I was like, I can't take care of my health. You know, I can't, I have to play football. I can't show weakness. So I kept playing football. You know, I could barely feel my legs. You know, it was, it was really bad. Um, so then, you know, long story short, football season ends. I had to stop training. You know, it was so bad. I could barely walk. I couldn't jump. It was insane. I, I kept telling my parents, yeah, it's fine. I pulled a muscle or whatever. Um, and then I went through my whole track season. I was a sprinter. <laughs> Imagine wow. this ass sprinting. Like, I was a sprinter. Like, what the hell? Wow. Um, so I was sprinting, and then I threw shot put and discus and twisting, you know, on my L5. Yeah. And I, I had no idea that I broke my L5, though. You know, so I was just – I there was pain down there, and I thought – I knew it was something terrible. I thought it was muscular um, until, you know, eight months later, I was like, hey, mom, dad, I want to get my back checked out to make sure it's nothing serious going into my senior season, which is going to be the biggest season of my life. And they're like, all right, perfect, you know. So MRIs and uh, x-rays come back doctors like how are you how are you still walking i'm like what do you mean and i thought he was i dude pat i thought he was fucking with me man right 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 and because like this whole time you know i I played football i did track i made i was i made state you know and i was like it's just probably just muscular and i'm like well what do you mean so i chuckled and he all he had to do was put the x-rays down and the mris down to show all the inflammation and he was like you're lucky to be walking right now i'm like what and so long story short, there was this one hit when I was a junior and I was playing ball that I tackled the guy. And then right at the last moment before he went down, my, one of my teammates sideswiped me yeah. and completely twist, twisted my hips. 
Um, and I knew that after that play, it was never the same because every day it was, it was worse. It was worse. Um, but over time, because I didn't get it fixed, the doctor um, noticed that like my vertebrae slipped out seven millimeters because where the, where the spinal cord runs through our yeah. vertebrae on each side, there's pedicles. Yes. Now these pedicles broke and right here is the vertebrae body. Now the broke on both sides, slipping the vertebrae out, causing exposure to my spinal cord. And because it's a weight bearing vertebrae, um, you know, it, it was, it was, it couldn't heal because it was always getting moved. And then yeah, this, yeah. the calcium, the calcium deposits, I was trying to reform that bone, um, formed like over formed that it was it was it was literally constricting my spinal cord and it was it was the worst pain of my life um so long story short you know i still young mindset i pretty much lied my way through physical therapy because i was like you know pain's not pain is reasonable doc you know i don't need surgery but also he said surgery if i got surgery i'd have to get surgery you know once every 10 years because the screws would deteriorate i'm like oh lord but anyway, didn't play college ball because my back got so bad, which is completely my fault. Um, you know, but it was a blessing in disguise because the way I had to train, I had to completely rebuild everything. I had to rebuild my form. I had to rebuild like just execution, um, figure out what actual like intensity was. You know, I couldn't yeah. lift with an ego anymore. So it was a blessing in disguise because that's where I found bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, you know, and I tried to do sports in college. Like I was a walk-on for the track team as a thrower um, and I made it, you know, and I went through the first season, but I, there was just, there was something missing, man. That like, that challenge of always pushing my, myself mentally and physically was missing. Cause, and so that's why I stuck with bodybuilding. Um, so I, I stem from that background of, you know, powerlifting, explosive lifting, yeah. but also from always trying to figure out how to get bigger. Cause I was always a kid in high school that people thought I was on gear, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, well, what the, what's gear? <laughs> right, 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 right. So um, let, let me ask you this. So, yeah. So you couldn't play, you were starting out being able to play in high school. Did you, is your back still messed up? Like, or did they do anything to it or kind of just, you had to just kind of stop and just, just live with it. Yeah. So I kind of skipped over that point there. Um, we found an area in Madison. So Madison is the capital of Wisconsin that did stem cell therapy research. Uh -huh. So then we did stem cells, um, which is expensive as shit, but yeah. we had some loopholes with insurance. So we did one type of stem cell that now, whoever's listening to this, if you guys are doctors, I have no idea what, how to formulate this, but like there was one that would, de they would break down calcium deposits. So that was needed to free it. Like, take pressure off my spinal cord and the other one was injected right into my bone um which was for bone regeneration yeah and that did amazing work i still have some issues with it to this day you know when i'm standing for long periods of time um i, I start because i i have an anterior pelvic tilt now because of it um and when i'm standing or from slouching so i have my postures had been fixed which is yeah. you know a good blessing in disguise but from I, right now i'd say I get a problem, an issue. Like I tweak it once every, you know, couple months. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. I'm still be able to bodybuild and you know, what, 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 I, what I, every time, man, every time I hit leg day, I think about my doctors and my spinal surgeon telling me, you know, you're never going to be able to deadlift. You're never going to be able to squat again, you know? And every single time I squat, I'm like, you know, fuck you doctors. Like I'm doing this. This yeah, is insane. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm walking, I'm healthy. This is where I'm at. It, it, was, it was, I needed that because I was like, Tell me I can't do it and I'm gonna fucking do it. It's I'm so interested about it because uh so I when I was 19 I broke uh my V4. Oof. Yes. It, but mine was a car accident. I flew out the back window, broke a tree, fucking all this crazy shit, right? Yeah, it was pretty bad. So the V4 broke. Now it broke completely, but like so imagine this is the this is let's say my finger is the vertebrae. So it broke off. And then it was like this. So it was like on a 50 degree angle, but one part was still touching the bone. So, so they were like, yeah, we could just, you know, we're, we're, they decided that instead of going in and cutting me, they're like, we'll just see how the body reheals it. And then if the angle's too much, then we'll have to go in. So I think it was every two or three weeks, they would x ray and check. And 
every other fucking time it was one it was the first time it was good next time ooh the angle's getting bigger then x-ray again angle's going good it was literally back and forth but it got to a point it was like it was like i think it was like 4 or 5 months in and the doctor's like well it's at a 45 degree angle um and your insurance doesn't want to pay anymore cuz they were like a million dollars in yeah paying for everything <laughs> and they were like yeah, I guess you're going to kind of be stuck with it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, and it was so bad. Like, if I ran my finger across my lower back, the bone, it was literally like a knuckle. Imagine a knuckle sticking out from the back oh. of my lower back. And then, um, dude, uh, it rained, it hurt. I sat longer than half an hour, it hurt. Like, wow. I had issues. And, uh, and then, you know, fast forward two years, I started training, so forth. Um, yeah, dude, I have no back issues whatsoever. Zero. Bro, it's crazy. Think, think about this, man. It's like, you know, back then, they didn't once talk to me about, you know, like the, the Western medicine doctors. Right, they right, right. right. Talk, they didn't once talk to me about, you know, stem cell therapy. They didn't once talk to me about growth hormone. Uh-huh. They didn't once talk to me about all these other options with peptides. Mm-hmm. But what they did talk to me about was, Oh, we can get you on muscle relaxers. We can get you on yeah. opioids. We yes. can get you on all these different things. Painkillers and, and surgery. Yep. Painkillers and when surgery. I, man, when I was I was addicted to painkillers at one point, and it was that, and it was because of my back. It was it was the hardest thing ever. Man, it it, it hooks you. They want you to be hooked. Yeah. Because that's how Western medicine does it. Because once you're in the pocket of big pharma, they got you forever. Yeah, dude. It's yeah, crazy. I, and it's, I I know for a fact. And this would definitely be what happened to you too. If we stop training, <clears throat> say if I decide to stop training, I, I'm done, bro. I would say within three to four months, my lower back would soften, everything would separate, and everything would probably just fucking fall apart. <laughs> yes, exactly. Dude, and, yeah. And the reason why I even bring that up is uh <clears throat> I don't know if you know Dom Cardone. He's an IV yeah. pro. Yeah, so Dom. So Dom stopped training for, I think it was four or five months, right? Completely stopped training. His back loosened up. He had an injury in his lower back that he never knew about. It was just muscle was compressed over it. So it loosened up. He woke up one day and couldn't walk. Oh, my God. They had to rush him and operate him in an instant. Oh, my Lord. So, and Liddy. And it was like he had an injury, you know, because he used to do concrete and then like all that crazy lifting and all that stuff. So he compressed, fucked everything up, all these hernias, yep. but everything was just compressed. Muscles were holding everything tight. So whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, but, yeah. But then he stopped and everything got soft. So to anybody listening, bro, don't stop lifting. No. You're going to have fucking whatever you think, whatever you don't have right now, you're going to have right away. Like right yes, away. Yes, exactly. And- and that's really like the thing. Some of my, uh, you know, obviously coaching hundred, hundreds of athletes, you come across injuries or old injuries come up, you know, and they get it checked out because as a society, what we're told to do culturally is like, oh, something hurts. You feel sick you go to the doctor. And then yes. their doctor tells the doctor tells them, hey, this is happening. You should you shouldn't exercise for two months. And I'm like, <clears throat> are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I'm like, you're going to tell this person that is already you know overweight or or you know struggling with some other things mentally to not train because you're afraid of more pain yeah. or how about we just fi- find the root cause you know like i'm just i'm a, I'm, a, I'm not sure where western medicine went wrong and i'm pretty sure where it's when money starts it's money play, it's, it it's, it's just always always follow the money i mean and here's the other thing too like and you know just in a defense you know playing devil's advocate just in defense for doctors you know, imagine you're a doctor, you get sued for everything. So yeah, your average person, the minute they feel some kind of pain, they're like, well, listen, you told me I could do something. And, you know, you don't know what that person is actually going to do when they go and do it. So the doctor could be like, look, man, stay active, do some cardio and touch a bit of weights. Well, that person can go in there and do that times 10. Yes. You, you don't know that. And the next thing you know, he comes back. He's like, well, you told me I can go to the gym. I'm suing you. So the, for, the easiest thing for the doctor is like, you know what? Fuck it. Just stay home because right. I know so, <laughs> at the end of the day, you're either going to get better sooner or later. And then if you don't, I'll just keep giving you fucking pain medication or just call it. Right. right. So, so it's not, it's not even the doctor's fault. Yeah. Yes. It's the 
it's the it's the lawsuits because the, the lawsuits will ruin you and can put you out of business um, when they start piling up with you just trying to help them. So because your average listen, man, we both know this. Your average human being can cannot be trusted. Um, is very immature, very selfish, um, especially especially in America. So yep. they they will fuck themselves up and they will blame you for it. And then you're technically screwed. Um, exactly. But, but then when it comes to actual medi- medication, though, that's where it's the doctor's fault. Because, look, man, <sighs> there's kickbacks, there's stuff like that. So they have to prescribe the things that, you know, they're going to make money off um, versus, you know, the the other aspect. Like, it's just the way exactly. it is. And, look, even you mentioned stem cell research. We both know how amazing that is. But 9 out of 10 people can't will never be able to afford it. And exactly. a lot of insurance won't even fucking touch it. So yep. it, there, it was, we were so blessed that there was a loophole through our insurance with, you know, my dad being a cop and my yep. mom being a teacher um, that if we didn't talk to this one attorney, you know, he was like, Hey, no, that's, that's a loophole. You can, you can leverage that. So if we didn't have that man, who knows where I'd be right now. Yeah. Um. So I'm so thankful for that, but I kind of getting back into where that led to, you know, after my back started getting better, um, during college, you know, freshman year of college, you know, I was top, you know, everybody thinks they're top shit, you know, going to college, you know, I, I wasn't playing football. So my ego went way up here to try to like counteract my ego, mm-hmm. from, like not having an ego for football. Um, but shit, man, there was, you know, how, like you, you brought this up and it kind of reminded me how you were getting x-rays like done every week, you know, or every two weeks or something yeah, yeah. that I got so sick my freshman year of college because of drinking because of drugs because yeah. and i'm not talking just weed i'm talking some other Stuck, stuff yeah, and yeah yeah and and uh like codeine um that my liver was so bad like my mm. liver enzymes were so through the roof mm. and that i had to get blood work on every single week but you know even training like as as a coach you know i know like i tell somebody Hey, we're going to get blood work done in three days, three days off from the gym. No, you know, we're going to do no cardio because just even training is a stress on your body and it's going to acutely raise enzymes, liver enzymes, you know? So these doctors, they were telling me like, you know, they, they were, they, they cared about me, you know, in college, you're seeing me every single week and they're like, Hey, no practice, no training, no creatine, no supplements. What was I doing? Every practice, everything, bro. Still smoking, still drinking all these. And then I had to realize like once they were like, yeah, you could you're on the brink of liver failure. And I'm like, are you shitting me? And they're no. So I had to like, I had a wake up call, another wake up call. I was like, wow, I got to take this ego and I got to separate it from my personality. You're You're like, like you're like, you're like a cat with nine lives, man. I know like, like 12 bones, almost paralyzed, you know, liver issues. I mean, thank God my liver is completely fine now. Yeah, yeah, Um, Yeah. But how, how that happened, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, um you said mentioned like you know how i got hooked up with hostile yeah. that uh man i had no i'd never expected that was ever going to happen um so first how'd you how'd you know Fuad? have you always like been following Fuad for a while so what happened is um just bodybuilding you know what i'm saying oh I, yeah uh you know just from the background of other stores i look at brands and what brands become you know relevant and are popping out so <clears throat> hostile came across my radar when it first came out and I was like, you know what? It's not the time yet, right? I was still kind of fresh and stuff like that. And then it was like, I think six or eight months later, um, I was like, yo, Dom, can you link link me? You know, because I'm good friends with Dom Cordon. Can you link me with Fuad? So he did. And it just went from there. And then, uh, you know, we spoke. You know, I let him know, um, you know, what I'm looking for. Like, you know, how I make my stores. Like, I'm, I'm catered towards bodybuilding. I'm a big fan of the brand. You know, I support it. Um, uh, you know, the whole bodybuilding industry and so forth. And um and we kind of linked from there. And then he saw that I was, you know, I was really supporting the brand. Like I really was back in the bodybuilding thing. Um and then it just kind of just our friendship just kind of just expanded from that aspect from there. That's so cool. That's so cool because I remember, you know, when I first uh joined the hostile team. In our group chat, Fuad would always be like, "Hey guys, you know these are the videos Pat has made about our supplements." Yeah, like you guys, if you could try to make some similar, like he would talk so highly. I'm like, "Who's this Pat guy? Like, who's this guy? Like, this is, these are damn good videos." Yeah, because you know what, it was, and that's what because I remember when I when I talked to Fuad originally, and and it's a lot when I have conversations with all these different uh, 
with different brands, but usually the brands are like I believe in. I'm like, look, man, uh, you know, just help me out a little bit, or uh, you know, like, like I say, exclusivities, and let's see if we can do some events, and then I'll do my part to try to give exposure to the brand. Like, I can't just ask for things without giving back. So, and then I was always very big on trying to give information to people, um, especially when it comes to ingredients. That was like the one thing that I. I started to get known for in the beginning and the customers and the communities and people liked is that I was just always shooting them information. So, um, look, you know, he, he seen that out like, cause he wasn't asking me to do these videos. It was just on my own. I was like, look, man, that shit's good. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it. And I did. And, yeah. um, and that's probably what it was. And he was like, it's, that's pretty cool because listen, for what deals with multiple stores across the country. So, when something like that pops up where a store is given recognition to the actual formulas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, which is beneficial and which people need, then it's good because, you know, his, the brand is built around quality and formula. So it has to be communicated, Absolutely. has to be communicated to the people that way. So, yeah. hundred percent. No, I, I like that. And that's what I, that's what I really like about you. It's like, you're always willing to give information, you know, even if you don't get something in return right away. You know, which is lacking yeah. in this industry and especially just like the culture in general of America. It's everybody wants everything without giving, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like I take a similar approach to kind of my content It's just like I want to give so much free information, you know, that people are like, oh, damn, like I haven't thought about it like that or, or so much because, man, all this, you know, there's Instagram has this one thing where it's like a subscription service, you know, Yes. and I'm like, I, I never I, only I fans. I yeah, well, yeah, like some stupid <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> hey, yo, subscribe to OnlyFans underscore Nick Justice. No, yeah, you'll get a whole that. bunch of butt pics. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't do that shit. Don't even get me going on that. that. Oh my god. Um, but like, yeah, I just want to give free value because the more free value you know I give, the more people can trust me. The more credible I am, and if I'm the first one, if I make a mistake, I'll admit it. You know, um, because I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to learn because I absorb information. I love it. Um which is kind of rerouting and how I got to know Fuad was during college, I went through some stuff and I developed over time, you know, an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, how I, I, mean, I learned through Fuad, you know, his videos of like, you guys, you need food. Like, you, like literally Fuad's known as a guy to be like, you know what, you need a lot of food to grow, get fat. It don't care if you get fat. Yeah. You know? So when I was going through my, like my eating disorder, bro, the, the scariest thing for me, was eating a piece of chicken that somebody else had cooked. You know, like my mom had cooked or something. Oh, so what does she it. put on there and stuff like that? I know exactly. What you mean. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, but then at the same time, I was wondering, like, why are my workouts complete shit? Why? Are, why do I have no pumps? You know, I'm shredded. Like, I look great. Why can't I build muscle? And so I started to learn more, like, with, from Fuad and his videos. You know, like um, his prep videos, all these different things. And that's why I learned about the hostile when he had first yes. had his, his uh, brandware company. Yes. And then, you know, fast forward, I, you know, it took me a while to recover and because I can, man, Pat, I was down such a rabbit hole that I completely shut my, my natural sex hormones down naturally. Like, wow. it was so bad. It was, it was so bad. Like, you know, and at the same time during college, you know, I would go out and drink and I would just drink straight vodka because I was afraid of calories from sweet Ooh. stuff. And, but, uh. Over time, you know, I recovered with obviously the help of Fuad, people online, just learning, um, you know, a big advocate for therapy. And um, fast forward to uh, recovery and then pandemic hit. Yes. And at this point, I was training in a storage unit. You know, I, at this time, I moved back up north because I was going to school in uh, southern Wisconsin. So I moved back up north with my family, pulled all my duck boat out of my our storage unit, me and my brother built a homemade gym in there. I mean, we got some bumper plates from the high school, two barbells, you know, a cheap $150 squat rack from Amazon. And, you know, Oh my God, it was so sick. I, it was a dope gym. I loved it. But that's when Fuad launched his supplements. Uh -huh. Okay. Now the worst time to launch supplements is during <laughs> a goddamn pandemic. You know? Know. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, all right, I support this man. He's helped me with so much stuff. I'm going to try out his supplements. Now, do you remember when he first launched Bloodshot and there was a misprint on the label? No, that one I don't remember. Was there? Wow. Yes. Yeah, so there was a misprint that on the label it said serving size one scoop and it's supposed to be two scoops. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. 
so then I'm like, oh, damn, like, okay, I got this in. So I did one scoop. And at that time, like minimal equipment, I was doing more like power building style of uh, yeah. training. Yeah. I'm like, man, one scoop of this pump pre was, it's fucking insane. You know, I'm like, what is going on? Like, this stuff's crazy. And then I realized a couple of weeks later, Fu had announced, like, yeah, you guys, two scoops. We screwed up on the first batch. Two scoops is the serving. So I did two scoops. And I'm like, oh, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? And like, my brother is not the type of guy to, uh, I have a younger brother. He's not the type of guy to use pre-workout. I'm like, Morris, try this stuff. Like you're, you're going to be, it's blown away. So Morris tries it, my brother. And you know, he's doing power lifting with me. He had to stop training because his lower back pump was so, it was so bad. much. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he's like, Nicholas, I'm never taking this again. I'm like, no, you will. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, long story short, um, every time. I would try to, uh, you know, I need, I need a new pre-workout. I would buy uh, Hostility and Bloodshot. Uh-huh. And then I would buy another brand that was like up and coming. Yeah. So I would always try to compare. And every time it would be like, damn, this hostile stuff won. And this, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by them at this point. I never talked to Fuad. I'm like, this, this is the best shit I've ever tried. And I, I swear to God, I'm not trying to, to y'all listen. No, no, I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. Pitch. Yeah. You're just but excited just about like, quality. Yeah. And I, this is how I kind of got in contact with Fuad. So I kept posting it on my stories. You know, I kept uh, sending my clients to it. I'm like, you guys get this pre-workout if you can afford it. There's some really good stuff. Um, over time, man, you know, uh, Fu had reached out when I started my first prep after, you know, lockdowns opened up and yeah. stuff. And, you know, we'll talk about COVID a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, um, you know, and Fu had's like, hey, man, you know, you've been, you've been supporting us. You're loyal. You know, how do you like the supplements? You know, he just slowly started to talk to yeah. me and stuff. And then, and one day I saw, oh, I got a new follower, Fuad Avia. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, so at this point, you know, I'm with my college buddies. I'm, I'm in the college house. I'm like, you guys are like, Fuad just followed me. Fuad just followed me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, what's yeah. going on? And then I go to my messages the next day and Fuad asks, he's like, hey man, you want to like be my first and only ambassador? You know, just, I like you. You're a good kid. You got a potential with the physique. So I'm like, perfect. And over time, you know, my code just did well enough. And I wasn't even getting free stuff. I wasn't getting paid. I wasn't getting free stuff. I literally, only kickback for me was 25% off. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, perfect. Yeah. And it did well enough, man, that four weeks out from my show, you know, Fuad and I talked, did a little bit of negotiating, sent me a contract. And uh, here I am, dude. I mean, That's pretty cool. just, just finished. Uh, I never thought once um, in my life, I'd be 22 years old at a booth at the Olympia, taking pictures with you know pros wanted to take pictures of me like new pros you know some friends and just that i actually had fans so you know to anybody listening if you if you guys want something within this industry don't do it for the sponsorship do Correct. it for the impact you're going to make on other people do it for the positive impact you're going to make on the world you know if you're you don't even have to be a coach you don't even have to be have to have you have to have done your first show yet you know find out where you can help people where you can give value and that's going to take you guys so much further than if you just post content for followers and clout, you know, and that's what a lot of my content's about is just like, you know, fuck the clout chasing, you know, be real, be authentic. And, you know, good things will happen to good people and take the, take the bad situations and twist them into something good to benefit other people. Yeah. I mean, listen, look, I, for anybody else that's, you know, that's listening, look, if, if you want to be successful in anything, number one, you you have to be you have to love it and constantly do it right so all nick did is just he loved something and he just let the owner know that he loved it not expecting anything back that's it yeah. like that's really what it was it was just generally he was showing them and then number two for anybody else you know who's trying to be relevant on social media it just goes back to consistency like it's really just consistency um, the ones that always fall off with anything or the ones who kind of give up. So like if Nick yep. intention of using a product wasn't legit, he would have just stopped using it and kind of just fell yep. off if, you know, and so he had consistency, but again, he cared about something a lot. So that's where a lot of it is, man. And a lot of like, you know, these influencers are kind of the same way that were actually successful. Um, but don't get me wrong. You get, you know, you have good ones, you have bad ones, but at the end of the day, it's just, they're just keep going and going yeah. and going. Um, yeah, man. And that's the way it is. And look, you know, in this industry, what's rare is being real and honest because we are in a pandemic. 
of mm-hmm. fucking filters, photoshopping, um, just lying, lying, lying. Uh, we've gone to a point where people's happiness is dictated by strangers' likes and comments, which in yep. turn is causing a lot of people aren't realizing how much mental issues are being caused right now, mental stress, uh, because majority of the people are hoping for a life that they're seeing that's fake on social media from fake fucking bodies um, from, you know, young influencers who aren't telling them that they're actually running a full bunch of gear from, you know, the cars and trips people have, but aren't showing you that they're living in a fucking basement or the bank account is at zero. They're seeing a false representation and they feel that what they have isn't good enough. So a lot of times they give up, get depressed, and fall, exactly. and fall into holes um, when it's it's, it's it's just not like that at all. It's exactly. And the thing is, I fell into that, too, because, you know, ending my freshman year of college, going into my sophomore year, what I was dealing with, you know, I, I'd almost I almost went to jail for some some bad shit, you know, and how that happened. And with God's grace, man, I didn't go that route. And everything was, you know, pulled from my record. It, well, it wasn't on my record officially, but at that point, but. At that point, man, I was in such a low spot that I, I sought that validation from social media. Right. I That's which led into me getting an eating disorder because I thought my only value after what I just went through, you know, was my physique being insanely yep. shredded. So what did I do? I kept looking at the comments, the followers, you know, all these different things. And it destroyed me mentally, which destroyed me physically because every time, you know, I'd post a picture and I just change the structure a bit knowingly that I'm already like dick skin shredded. Yeah. You know, people would notice it. And then it was just a compounding effect, Mm -hmm. but nobody, nobody knew what I was going on inside my head, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the dark side of social media. Um, So that what we were, we were talking about before is just doing it for an authentic reason. You don't have to look shredded. You don't have to be the biggest guy. If you can just give some type of value, it can be laughter. It can be, knowledge it can be you know motivation do that to help other people because you have no idea people watching this podcast they're going to be affected by us talking you have no idea if you have 900 followers you know some some person that's trying to be a fitness influencer you have no idea if you make one post and that one post helps one person across the country keep doing it and it's like do it for the real reasons don't do it for clout yeah man listen dude we it's easy for us to say right because we've we've gone through all this we've self learned we self taught um you know we we you know listen bro I'm like fucking old as shit so I have all different types of experience <laughs> so every all the mistakes you've made I've done it like ten times worse yeah. and ten times fucking multiple times but you know at, at the end of the day man it's listen man look the mis- I say the mistakes we make. They're not really mistakes. They're more like learning opportunities, right? So realistically, um, you know, God gives us opportunities to grow by us having a conscience to make decisions that are wrong, right? Amen. Yep. Yep. Because, you know, we're going to make those bad decisions. It's just human nature, right? We're going to fall into different vice of jealousy, envy, and so forth. But what happens afterwards is really what dictates our actual growth. Because yes. realistically, the ones that are always stuck in the same place are the ones who continue to blame everything else for the mistakes they continue to keep making, right? Yes. So so it's kind of like that way, man. Um, so again, <clears throat> listen, we're giving advice. We know you guys are going to fuck up. Just remember when you do, you have the opportunity to learn from it and move on everybody's been yeah everybody's been in all your shoes you know what i'm saying we're all expecting you actually to fuck up (laughs) yes like don't you guys don't worry pat's fucked up more than you will yeah yeah keep keep screwing up just keep fucking up um no man (laughs) look it's just just don't get you know to everybody just don't get discouraged like it's just the way it is man like you know we we are you know we are we are always going to have things that just mess us up and just you know, our opportunities are to grow. Like, yeah. listen, if everything, listen, if everything is going perfect for a person, 
they will always be exactly, exactly the same. Yes. There is no motivation uh, to grow, to improve or so forth because either there's no challenges or everything is just perfect. You know what Absolutely. I mean? So, so that's and how that's, it all goes down. That's what I kind of base my, you know, my, my coaching philosophy off of, but also like the name of, you know, my, my company. So evolution <clears throat> aesthetics, my slogan is the pursuit of personal excellence. You know, aesthetics, obviously you hear that word and you think, oh, fit, like fitness influencer yeah, yeah, yeah. type vibes, but no, you know, aesthetics can be mental aesthetics as well. But, you know, the, the ultimate rebellion to anything in life, the ultimate rebellion to feeling down and depressed, the ultimate rebellion to coming out of a bad spot in life, grief, all these different things is the pursuit of personal excellence. Personal excellence starts in your head, you guys. Personal excellence doesn't start with your body. Personal, if you want the best for yourself and everybody around you, it starts with excellence in your mind. Yeah. And then it's going to transfer to your body. And then it's going to transfer into the energy you put out in the world, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like, I had to think about that one, you know, a while. Like, I didn't want to come up with some, you know, cheesy name or nothing. You know, it's just like, I had to think, like, who am I? You know, I'm always trying to do better. So, it's like, pursue personal excellence. I want people to do that. And if I can touch people, you know, at the Olympia or the Arnold, you know, it, it touch them in a way where they want to get better, then my my goal has been fulfilled. Yeah, Nick, we need you to touch everybody. Touch Bro, everybody. it's a, but man, <laughs> circles like it's, <laughs> you God, just went like God. right into it, dude. <laughs> I literally accepted that one. I accepted it. I'm like, I'm still caught on the emotional side of things. So I'm like, I'm like, oh wait, that sounded so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So hey, if, you're, if you're listening to this, I'm not going to touch you at the Olympia. I'm not going to touch you at the. Yeah, Olympia. he's going to touch you all over, bro. When you come through the Olympia, no. <laughs> um, was going to say, uh, but no, that that's listen, that's awesome advice. And the last thing I want to touch on before we kind of go is, dude, how do you feel about the Olympia this year, man? I'm yeah. and I'm referring to more open, like because there's so many categories, yeah. so we go over place, but like I'm just referring to the straight open body movement. Dude, I was okay. So like, I, like everybody else, you know, me and my friends did our picks. Everybody's pick was wrong. Um, I was. I'm so happy that Hottie won. Like honestly, I'm very happy Hottie won. I thought it was very well deserved. Yeah. Um, I don't really care about the people saying like the the soft back stuff online. You it's know, not even like there's there's people that listen, man. For all the all the guys from the old school generation, listen, you competed to be 200 pounds shredded. But yeah, none of you showed off your glutes. Yes. And none of you technically even had the glutes that these guys have now. Exactly. So you're literally just trying to point, point, point a way to justify that you're better when in reality right. you're all good for the exactly. time for the time you're competing in. So that's just right. how it is. But right, go- exactly. And the, um, so I'm dude, Derek in second blew me away it was me so when we were sitting at the uh at the pr- open pre-judging it was like all the hostile athletes were lined up you know yeah. and i was like i was making bets at justin shire and i lost a couple of them <laughs> but uh you know i was like he was talking i was talking to me and paul paul was right next to me and I'm like paul and me were like dude Derek got the whole lineup yeah. so far like we think Derek has got first you know yeah. and then and then hottie came out and i'm like yo it, it was just it was such a crazy experience being there at open or at uh, the finals, excuse yeah. me, being there at finals and hearing like the reigning champ go from first to fifth, just like I was, I was kind of expecting it as bad as it sounds, but obviously a lot of people were because of, you know, the presentation that he had on stage, mm-hmm. but you know, just being there and here, cause like, that's something nobody's going to hear is go, like being there in person. Yeah. The person that was considered for the whole year, unbeatable yeah. going from first to fifth. And then two people, Derek first year in open gets second place. I'm like, yeah. that's, that's insane. Like, I'm so happy that, you know, just for the guys that placed as well as I did, because, you know, I think this Olympia, obviously, do you agree that this was probably in the, in the last, it was the most prestigious Olympia in a long time. Yes. A hundred percent. Do you think, do you think next year is going to be even crazier? I think we won't have 30 guys. We'll have 20. Mm-hmm. But because Hattie isn't set in stone to be a consecutive winner, um, mm. and Andrew is so mo- so movable, Samson is still movable. Um, 
because Chris Oka is still movable, because you have a couple people that are still like very can literally just zoom through. Um, I think next year is going to be another like really exciting, uh, exciting time. I think the top three are technically like kind of like the top three, and then everybody yep. else has to kind of just match or fit some kind of look. Yeah, I agree. Them. Um, on on that aspect, um, were you dis were you disappointed in any places this year, like outside of top ten? Um, no, man. Uh, I think listen, I think the judges did what they were what they did. Everything was fine. I, I really do. Um, because the the problem is like, like I could be like, well, this person should have been lower because they look better, and it'd be like, well, listen, this person had this fall, this person has this fall. So there's certain yeah. things that I weigh it. Um, I will say though that forward lost a bet to me and I'm going to have to make sure he pays up. He's supposed to Yo, shave. how much? His whole beard's supposed to be shaved off. Yes. No. Yes, because we bet. Shut up. Yes, because he bet that Brandon will be in the top three. I bet that Brandon will be out of the top three. And I was literally on it. And he has it on video because it was in the first time I was in a booth. Yeah. In a booth. And uh, Brandon got fourth. <laughs> so Dude, this is gonna be so funny. Now, now listen. Here, here's what I would say. I think Samson could have been fourth. Yes, in my opinion, I think Brandon was still good. He was big. Like I think he, you know, fourth. <clears throat> like Samson fourth. Uh, Brandon fifth, and Remy sixth. Like I yeah. can see it that way. Um, I think the brother looked great. It just he was still he was pouring water, man. He was yeah. really pouring water a lot. Um, I think. Honestly, I think if Andrew would just tighten up his hams and glutes, yeah. and glutes and actually get a little bit bigger hamstring, he would just literally be fucking third or second. I was I was really excited to uh, see how Ian would do this year. Like I was, man, Ian's <clears throat> progress was insane. And then I was just like, how he placed. I was like, I don't know what went wrong, man. I, like obviously the judges put him where I think he deserved it. But it was just, in my opinion, I was disappointed. I was like, dude, Ian could have mixed up top 10 if he came in yeah. crazy. Well, the problem is when you're heavy, when you're really, really heavy, you're either chasing the conditioning or the fullness, or you're trying mm -hmm. to get in the middle. So, for example, Hadi can have technically the best of everything because of his height, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He's not like a 260 guy or 270, 80 that has to play that game. Like Samson, for example, for him to play the conditioning game, he'll lose the size effect. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of plays in that, in that way. Um, you know, plus the other thing is like, to me, like, you know, I see Derek possibly like being the one kind of hitting, you know, grabbing these uh, several times. Um, sure. But to me, when I look at open bodybuilding, I look at muscle mass conditioning and then structure yep. versus structure uh, not mass and conditioning so in other oh. words like so that's the way i look at it versus classic i look at this is how because here's the, here's the way i look at it in open bodybuilding you cannot train for structure facts it's genetic that's true that's true 100%. And, and classic uh physique is a genetic fucking category like that's yeah that's that's the standard yes. that they're trying to meet yeah. open is not so you can train for muscle mass. You can train to shape out your body to a certain degree by training muscle for mass, muscle mass the right way, right? But you can't create a structure. You can't create like a Derek structure. You know yeah, what I'm true. saying? So when we have – so when I have – that's my look. So not look, my perception. So when you look at my perception and then you look at – let's say somebody like Nick, right? Well, Nick technically, he should be – blown out his waist by now but it's not right and he keeps putting on mass and he keeps becoming the biggest guy on stage at 260 or 255 mm -hmm. he was and his conditioning's hard and he's got the wow factor you know what yeah. i'm saying it's like you look at him it's like you know you go through all the poses and you're like wow and some of the poses will be like oh, i don't like the shape well, that's too fucking bad it's open body yeah body. So exactly, that, right. that's so that's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Because let's say Derek's two. Let's say Derek's two forty next year, right? Let's say Nick is two fucking seventy five. 
Yeah. Which would be, or let's just set 270, because that's like 15 pounds heavier. Like, do you reward a structure that person's born with? Damn, you true. You see where I'm going That's with this? Point. That's a good point. No, I, I get you. I like this perspective. Yes. Because so, for me, for me coming from, you know, like my background, like obviously right now, NPC on physique. That's okay. where I'm going to be going pro at. I just, I'm tall. I'm, in, I'm six one, So I got to mm -hmm. fill out my structure. Okay. So me, I always have that aesthetic look. Like I'm looking, always looking yeah. for structure. Yeah. But you just explained it to me in a way that like, I literally, when you were talking, I had to think like, I got to, okay. I disagree. Wait, I got to take that out in my mind because I'm only thinking about structure. So yeah. you just like proved me wrong in my own mind. So it's like, that makes like, that's such a better way to think about it. And that's what I love about, you know, open and just how, how controversial it is. Yeah. Cause now I just learned something from you. It's like, yeah. so you said, you said shape. No, you said muscular muscle conditioning, conditioning and then shape and then shape and then structure. Uh, shape and structure. Oh, stri shape and structure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, listen, that makes sense. listen, don't get me wrong. I say Nick is 270, but his waist blows up. Okay. Oh, bro. yeah. Then it doesn't work. If he's yep. two, if he's 270 and his waist is still the same. Yeah. Bro, he, this mus muscle monster just did the unthinkable. Managed yes. to hold his waist in while growing everything else. Like, how yes. can you... You can't not just say I can't reward this just because it doesn't feel appealing to you. Like, yep. let's, let's be serious. Is Jay Cutler appealing? No, like, no. Okay, but y you see what I'm saying? He's not. Yes, exactly. Very, he's not very appealing. The structure isn't perfect. Like his legs are a little bit shorter when he was, yep. you know, when he was winning and so forth. Certain shots on the front double bicep, his legs look thin, even though there were right. His waist was huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he got tons of muscle, and he just overpowered everybody. Exactly, exactly. So that makes sense, and I so think people that's kind my of look skew it. it. Yeah, no, that's I like that look, and that definitely changed my opinion because I think me, along with a lot of other people, you know, me not anymore because I kind of changed it to how you just brought it up. They think of who I want Mr. Olympia to be the prettiest on stage, and yeah. then the most muscular, and then the most conditioned. Yeah, and which so is you gotta, fine. You gotta fly. Yeah. Right, right. Because everybody has their own opinions, their own perspective. But when it comes down to like the standards of the division, I really like the way you thought of it. I liked this year how Nick in his front double bicep, he would he would extend his core up, uh -huh. you know, and hit it, and then and squeeze then he it out, breathe everything out. He didn't do that last year. Yeah, it changed it up a lot. I, I, I know, and I think I liked. It. I think that uh, really benefited him. It it does, man. Listen, he it's you know you you people have to fight certain things when they're structured a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So for him, it's always like a battle. Yeah, um, he is a bodybuilder. He builds around his structure. Um, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, you know what I think is if we take Andrew, right, and if Andrew does what he's supposed to do. I'm sorry, bro. That's Mr. Olympia. Just give it to him a couple yeah. years because he's gigantic. He yeah. is huge. He would be conditioned. His shape would be stupid, and he would look like a yeah. huge cartoon character. It's kind of like a Sean Imagine Roden, but even fucking bigger. <laughs> Literally. Imagine if, uh, you know, Andrew got hooked up with, like, you know, like Hottie or Matt – or not Hot Hani, sorry, or Matt Jansen. You yeah, know, I mean, that, like, yeah, nothing, nothing against Andrew's coach, yeah. you know, but I'm just saying, like, they always bring that, that just this, that paper thin skin, you know, because Andrew, dude, he's got he's got a lot of potential. Uh, listen, Andrew's new. Um, Andrew loves bodybuilding, but there's different, there's different levels of love. Yeah, there's obsession and craziness, and you're yeah. like, I will fucking suffer. You know what I'm saying? And then there's, mm -hmm. I love this. This is fucking awesome. I look great. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Andrew has hit that point of being like obsessed, like really mentally fucking, because that's a deep corner you have to go into to really yeah. hit that kind of conditioning level and so yes. forth. Um, but I think I would say out of everybody that's, you know, in this whole entire, out of every competitor, I think he has one of the biggest chances to just pop out of nowhere and just yeah roll right into the front. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think him and Samson, man, can do some crazy stuff in the Yeah, in the I think yeah, I think Samson's awesome too. It just again, 
it's to me when I look at Andrew, I, I can't look away. It's yeah, just, yeah, true. No matter how many ways I try to like, let me look at it this way. If there's a fault or flaw, and I'm like, I fucking can't, bro. This dude's right. he's a fucking cartoon character. I can't like, <laughs> and you know what I mean. And it's just everything is. If it, like, I'm, I think, I think the biggest part is because his legs are so gigantic. His waist is just. His waist would never go to like this. No, no, no. Ever. No. Ever. And his legs just keep going like this. And his shoulders yeah. are always set up like this. And it's just he just has a built structure. It's just set. Yeah. And it's just set for life, man. It, so it, it's crazy. It's pretty crazy. And uh hopefully Remy is smart and just retires. Yeah. Honestly, man. I, I was because I remember he was I mean, I don't listen to it that much, but I was just like listening to it when I was working one time. Um, Dennis James brought him onto his podcast and Robbie was saying that like, yeah, like people are talking about, you know, me retiring after this, this Olympia, but like, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but dude, I think man, health, the competition, all these different things, you know, that's another thing we can touch on is just health and bodybuilding because that's a huge topic, but that can be saved for another time if you want. But, you know, Robbie's at that point, man, where this year showed everybody that he is beatable. You know, that is, <clears throat> yeah. that's, <clears throat> Well, here's, so here's, now we gotta think, like, here's the thing, man, with Rami, like, the body's done. That's just yeah. what it comes down to. It's just done. Like, there's party parts that kind of gave up. Um, even his waist expanded a lot. Like, we look at Rami when he poses and stuff, and the, and the, and the shots that were shown to us, and the waist looks so small. But then when he did his poses on stage, it was actually, and they compared it to a couple years before, 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 it's fucking gigantic now. So, yeah. It's kind of like Remy, man. It's listen, man. You accomplish what you have to accomplish, like you did what you had to do. Just go out on a high note and call it a day. Because yeah, what if you do show up and now you get eighth? Oof. You're I not. Know. You're not going to be low. You're not going to be in the top five. Yeah, like I know for a fact that fifth place was a gift. Like I know that yeah. for a fact. So, yes. um, so yeah, so that's that's just my that's my overall outlook on. The open Olympia man, like that. No, one. I like that outlook. I definitely, uh, you definitely got to switch my mind on some things for the better, which I liked. But regardless, man, I just can't wait to see what comes back next year at that Olympia. You know, that's gonna be some nuts, nuts competition. <laughs> yeah, man. It's again, and it comes down to because Hattie's placing isn't set in stone. It's like, you know, we, yeah. we usually have Olympias and they're kind of like set in stone. Like, we're just like, yeah. this guy's kind of be hard to beat going forward. Right. And, you know, we could say, yeah, it's going to be hard to beat going forward, but Derek was right behind him in points. Yeah. And Derek, and Nick can squeeze in with more mass. They could, like, yes. Because he looked, listen, and it's not just me saying because I'm Nick's friend. It's just like when he walked on that fucking stage, I was like, what the fuck, man? I know. And it was this, and listen, it was the same way when I seen Derek. When Derek walked out, I was like, holy fuck. So, yeah. and I think that's the biggest part is, like you have to have a wow, like yes, you know you could be perfect. It doesn't fucking matter. Like there has to be like holy shit. There just has to be. Hundred percent. So wait, Pat, have you ever? Um, I, I always wonder about this. Have you ever competed before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I competed uh, in the open. My last show was like, what was it? Two and a half years ago. Oh uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm always in. I did classic one time when I first came aboard. <laughs> um, I set my weight cap at that time. The earliest wake up was two oh seven. Um what? So, yeah, I don't I don't even know how I made that wake up. It was horrendous. All I know is I made that wake up and uh <clears throat> I did a rebound that and I did a perfect, perfect rebound um post show and then uh within eight weeks I was two fifty five. But like whoa, but like hard and fucking full. It was Are you like, kidding? Yeah, it was. It was Damn, pretty, it was pretty. Bro, crazy. I've never, I've never seen uh, your stage shots for some reason. I have it on my personal page. It's like I never, I'm not the type of guy to just be like, yo, I don't, I yeah, never put yeah. it up. And like, <clears throat> I've never been able to get like the phys- my stage to where it's supposed to be. I'm like that fine line where, like, two three weeks, I'll be like the last show I did, uh, two three weeks, I was like in uh, mid forties. Uh-huh. And, and it was like, to me, it was like perfect. But then my yeah. coach wanted my hammies to really come out. 
So we ended up ended up in the, like the mid thirties, but because of that, <coughs> my back disappeared, like my thickness, mm-hmm. because I started losing. Yep. Like, so I technically have to be fuller, but yeah. like versus because I I go I can lose it quick, man. Like it could be yeah, it could be really quick if the food isn't bounced back and forth like yep. every couple that of days. Was, that was like me on uh, <clears throat> excuse me. On my prep, I was losing so quick, you know. I mean, lowest my calories got down to is about like two thousand. I was one seventy seven on stage. I'm two fifty now, cruising, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, that was a year and a half ago when I was on stage. Um, but like I lost so much size, you know, and it's just like because we I was going up against my competition was size, so we had to bring condition, you know. And it was just a local NPC show, and honestly, I'm really glad that we pushed so much condition. You know, I mean, I was, I mean, my glutes aren't even showing on stage and my glutes were shredded to the bone. Like it was absurd. Um, but you know, I'm glad that I got to that point. Cause now when I prep somebody, <clears throat> I'm able to like put myself in that position because in my opinion, you shouldn't, this is how I look at it. And people are going to disagree with me. You have to prep somebody knowing that you were once in that position, if right. they're truly ready for a show, you know? And so I'm, I'm very grateful that I, you know, I did get that conditioning that shredded even at the cost of losing muscle um you know i, I was natural back then so it was, it was easier to lose muscle you know but uh but it made me a better coach you know because i was still coaching during that time and then a couple of weeks later you know i had a, one of my clients do his show and it made me realize like oh i gotta push him pretty damn hard these next few weeks um but yeah i'm kind of like you i don't really post my stage shots because yeah. i mean i'm a lot bigger now and so i'm not proud of him but i'm posing with shit but is you know i just can't wait till I get on stage next time. Yeah, I'm the same way, and I'm I, and I use the wrong term. I'm not open. I'm just bodybuilding. I'm <laughs> set open like it's fucking, <laughs> like like I'm fucking some kind of pro. No, I'm uh, I was always uh, I always I you know the classic. I did heavyweight, and then my last show was super. I have to be in a super because I can't. Even if somebody would suck me down into 24, it would just my long long arms and long limbs just aren't gonna do it. So yeah, uh, it's kind of that way. So. I kind of, I you know, I want to definitely go back on stage, but I don't know what's going to happen, man. Like, I just fucking, yeah. I just found out I have arthritis in my one fucking knee. So, so, Damn. so there goes half of any possible leg workouts I could ever do. Yep. Um, so right now I'm just kind of playing around and seeing, uh, like the next month is going to be me trying to figure out what I can get away with exercise, exercise wise. And then, like, actually, truly body build when I do fucking legs. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. don't deal with you because you have to deal with your back. Uh, right. And then, see, I just, no offense to physique, I don't, I'm like, I don't know if I can do the fucking poses, bro. Like, <laughs> like, you know, the other day I was like, let me do a pose. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this, dude. Like, yeah. Like, I was like, no way, this might be it. So, well, I, uh, I'm the same way, dude. I, I've literally kept myself practicing more classic posing and more, you know, posing routines than what I do for, for men's physique. Cause like, yeah, cool. You can only throw so much in a men's physique routine, yeah. but you know, I'm so tall that I, you know, my, you're, you're, you my have, shit, man. Yes, you have no choice, but to go for physique and then grow your way up. Um, exactly. Yeah. And then I might just be stuck where I physically can't <laughs> legs like I'm supposed to. And you know what I mean? And I might have to do it. So I don't know. We'll see, man. I, uh, you know, in the next month, I kind of will see uh, what happens, man. If I can get and away got, with it. And the kid on the way, too, man. You yeah. That's a big thing, too. So Yeah, and, and listen, man, the secret plan was to s- squeeze a show in before the baby's born. And then my <laughs> fucking knee wouldn't get better, and I went to get it checked out, and they told me, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. So, But we'll see. Um, yep. We'll see, and uh, we'll just go. You know what I mean? Exactly, I just man. I, I know people that have fucking done shows before with a fucking torn hamstring in the middle of prep. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean Chris so, did it. Yeah, and just kept going. And it was like yeah. I remember my one friend had like a black and blue fucking whole entire hamstring. Oh like it was black and blue. He could he, he just he didn't even do any weight. He would just use his leg to pump blood in it. The whole Wow. Prep. And he did the huh. show and fucking won this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy you know when, when you push your mind to that limit you know how resilient your body can become and it's just like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i'm not gonna pull out you know it's just like you know fuck i that yeah bro you know, who would have thought chris would have won with torn hamstring too so yeah yeah pretty wild man but 
that's the that's the take on Olympia. And uh Nick, we'll have to do a part two again one day. Yeah, I'd love to, man. I'm I mean I do I do this for a living, dude. I coach, train, you know, talk to people. So whenever you want to get me on, if people like me on, then perfect. Of course, brother. Thank you so much, Nick. And uh of course and have a great night, man. You have a great night too, Pat. See ya.